Watch this garage. What do you think? <clears throat> All right, well, we got, plus there's, there's two bodies over here. So we got another two bags. Plus I have a bunch of bags put away that are already clean, but we want to get those bags cleaned up. You know, it's the end of the season. It's the end of the summer. Okay, it's actually summer is over this weekend for the most part, of September. And fall is starting, but fall is a really good time for Toro. So let's get started. Let's just start off with, you know, doing what we can to these things. And we'll see what happens. As you can see, it's cleaning already. So what I have in here is just good laundry detergent. A little bit of like an OxyClean product. Just a little bit and a little bit of bleach and just as I'm sort of working today because I'm pressure washing all these machines or whatever else you're doing you know around the house or the shop this needs one more rinse what do you think this is actually the bag to the one I'm cleaning okay and you'll get a better look at it in a little bit all right almost done for today Starting to get a little later, but it's beautiful today. It's a little windy, but it's gorgeous out. It's a great day for this. Eventually. Welcome back, guys. Archer's Garage. For those of you that are coming back, and for those of you that are new, uh, welcome. So today, we're going to start working on this Toro that we cleaned the other day. This is like what, last week I cleaned this. So this is in pretty nice shape. I think you've seen a little bit of the footage outside. But I'm going to start off today. These are the two of the blades that I took off of the two machines that I was cleaning and they're in pretty good shape but since it looks like it's gonna storm what I'd like to do is clean these blades up plus I think I have uh, I got a couple of the uh, the belt guards that go underneath so I'm gonna clean them up sharpen them balance them and then I'll do my thing with them spray them and this way these are done they're hanging up and and today it's kind of damp and it's kind of cool. It's nice out. It was hot for a little bit now. It looks like I said, it looks like it's going to be storming. So I'm going to do this first. I can do it outside and enjoy myself. And then we're going to get started on this guy. So we'll see you guys in a few minutes and, and uh, we'll check on uh, the progress as we go. One hour later. And then we're going to come in here with the wire wheel, a couple of different wire wheels. And then I'm going to put a little acid on it. I'm going to get started on this and then we're going to dig into the motor. All right, let's squirt a little bit while we're, we'll just keep this moist while we're working on, you know, the other stuff. And this is just the same stuff I like to use. It's, uh, we use this in auto body work. It's an, it, it, it's a fast etch or etchant. It's an acid and we use it to prep before paint primer. It also dissolves rust and it treats the rust and it leaves the zinc precipitate. So it can sit like that. Okay, I use my 10 millimeter and this guy's got it's got these little ferrules which I'll show you in a minute. They go in there. So to get this kind of stuff off I like to take my lubricant you know this is my two stroke just kind of wet it down and when you grab your pliers you can just kind of rotate and it slides right in and the stuff slides in and it just pulls right off and it's just the easiest way so there's these ferrules we don't want to lose them and they're in here so Put that aside. One's already captured. We're going to grab the other one. Take it out of the plastic so I can wash the plastic. Go throw it out in my degreaser tank. Same thing with this. Uh, this is the gasket. We'll pull that off. Reuse it. Same thing with the fuel hose. Same, same scenario. We'll pull that off. Off. This is the newer Kohler. 
it's actually a nice motor uh, this is a really nice automatic choke setup on here so we just want to take note of how it's laid out on here before we pull it off now I've got the fuel line off so we're just going to pull straight and let go of the, the gasket and it should come straight forward and you'll see when it comes straight forward it's going to stop all right so how do you get this part off well there's a couple of ways of doing it okay and the way I usually do it is I remove the nuts on the on the um, exhaust over here so we're going to start off with that now pretty much everything is 10 millimeter on these things so just so you see you pull it forward it's going to jam up it's going to get stuck so we're going to start off with just to put a little lubricant on and it's 10 millimeter comes off real easy especially this one because it's a beautiful shape and we're only going to take it off like this just want to get the so just notice how that goes in All right that's replaceable that's your heat stove it's kind of a, what they call a divorce choke we'll take that off first so we have that put that to the side now we should be able to pull the carburetor all the way and we have our little spring here and a little spring hole and this just lifts up okay so we can take it over to the bench and let's take a look at it let's see what's inside 12 seconds later all right before we take a peek inside let's get the outside cleaned off a little bit so I'm just going to scrape it with a screwdriver and uh, this here and we'll pour a little bit of my special juice on it and then we'll crack it open just a little gookie in here nice All right, let's see Let me just blow that out, a little low pressure air. There's still some gook there. A little gas in it. I loosen this up. We'll make sure we tighten that again. This way if somebody ever wants to use it, plus we want to know it works. Wow, just a little bit of gook. Down in there. And this looks good. Throw that in there. Let it soak for a bit. Let's see. It looks real good. This thing looks really good. We got to get that out. Now you don't have to, but we want to take it out anyway. It needs more cleaning. Now, a lot of times these are a pain in the neck to get out. You need to push on that, in that hole, with your pick. While you're turning it. So I shove my pick in there. I'm trying to put a little pressure on it. And then it should kind of fall out. But sometimes you got to keep doing it. There we go. All right, we'll get that checked out. Oh, that came out nice and easy. All right, let's, let me bloat it. We're gonna bloat it a little bit. Now, I always blow away from the table because this way I'm not gonna knock anything off the table. And, and it's just a good habit because you know, you, it's so easy to just not pay attention for a minute. That looks good, we gotta run our brushes through it. That looks really good. We have to get this out next this guy so I'm just gonna look here alright so basically I'm just like looking in here to see you, you could turn it in but it's so rarely ever, excuse me ever idle 
You can just measure it. But we're going to have to take out that aisle screw. And then we should be able to pry this up. All right. And I don't think there's anything in here. This is the lightest, smallest one, and it's about 27 thousandths or so. And I know these carbs are tighter. So we're going to want to run, we're going to want to run our um, drill in that just to make sure because those are really tight and if they're really well designed they're really really tight we can open it up a little bit yeah there's nothing in here that looks really good guys let's blow it out now this guy there is a jet there. You ain't going to be sticking anything in there. Just make sure it's clean. If I had a guess, I'm going to start off at about 24-ish. Because I know they're real tight. Yeah, okay, that goes through. And that is 24. Let's go up to... We're just going to go up one size. Just to alleviate any potential issues. And then make sure that it's clean and there's no debris in it because it is, you know, it's not brand new. Yeah, see, that's up at 25. Here we go. This is going to be 26. All right, so that's what we're going to do it to. Just bringing it up a little bit. it out. This way there's no debris in it or oxidation. Okay, so we're just going to dump a little two-stroke on everything. Just to freshen it all up, make it easier to assemble and make sure everybody, everybody's happy. Okay, so now we're going to just check on this. Just make sure it's good and clean. Just blow it through. Alright, this is all nice and clean. Now we can put our main jet in. Not too tight. I'm going to put this jet in, and this is where you really want to put some juice on it because those two O-rings, it'll be easier to push down. And there's a flat. The flat goes up against the flat that's there. Down it goes. And this we're going to guesstimate. It's about an eighth of an inch sticking out. Give it a little bit more, you know. Nothing wrong with that, a little bit more idle. Okay, and just check on that. There's that little spring. These guys, you always want to make sure they're, they're good and clean because there's a little spring on these. And it goes. Put our gasket down. I already wiped off. Make sure it fits in the slots. A little bit of my two stroke. Now, this, I'll just drop down on there. Now, which way do we want to orientate it? And we want to put, so we don't have any issues on the threads of the gasket, so it seals well. So, pretty much to the front. So this is this is the back of the car. This is the front of the car. We want to rotate it this way. Yeah. Right, we're ready to put it on. Done. Okay, guys, just hand tight. All right, we'll get this thing on and. 
we're going to take a look at the magneto ignition system. We're going to do a plug. We'll do a compression test. Let's see where we're at. Nice carburetor. A few moments later. I have a package coming, so I have to pay attention, which is a problem because I don't have the money for it. Not the package. Paying attention. <clears throat> all right, so basically this is the same reverse. So all we have to concern ourselves with right now. Now, let's just take a look inside the tank. You know, I think the tank might be dirty. I'm going to go get a, uh, a light real quick and, and take a peek inside the tank since I didn't do that. We may want to take this tank off. I'm willing to bet that there's junk in there. Stand by. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's in there. But, you know, I'm not too happy. Yeah, it is. there's also a filter there. We wouldn't want to take that tank off as much of a pain in the neck as it might be. All right, let's throw the spring on first. Now we can put the rod on. And just make sure that that's clean. And if you want to, because it is dry, put some of your two-stroke with your tranny fluid on. You guys should have that by now. I put before I went, I just grabbed some food, and before I went in, now we don't know what the condition of back there is, but everything else looks good. I threw a little bit of, a little more acid on that, and just the two applications is enough. We'll come back a little later and we'll wash it off. Now, you don't really have to neutralize it, so don't worry about it. <clears throat> Alright, so we got that on. Now we have a couple of options that we can do for testing purposes. What we can do is, is we can throw... Um, <clears throat> these little ferrules on for now because we don't want to put the cover on and I got to clean it. So we're going to throw the ferrules on. So this went. Did it go like that? Seems like it did. Why am I having a hard time? Do I need to? Here we go. Alright. Yeah, we're going to take the better. The better nuts. This is all the same, but we'll put the better ones on. And the others we'll put on there. We're going to put just a little bit of anti sneeze on those studs on the muffler. And we want to put a little bit of oil down in there, let it soak down in. Just for the next guy. Alright, so I'm going to tighten this stuff up. And we're going to pull the plug. I want to pull the tank because I need to give the tank some time to dry. Not that it's going to have enough time to dry. But we're going to pull the tank anyway and get started on that. I pulled this out and all kinds of powder came out. So we're going to get this clean. That's your filter. We'll get that cleaned up good. And we're going to rinse the tank out with some the hose since the hose is out. There's debris all in it. See? So we'll get that cleaned out, and then I'll put a little bit of gas in it, shake it around, and rinse it again. All right, we got this all cleaned out. Yeah, it looks nice. So we'll slip this in first. That goes into the tank. Oh, we got one more thing. We'll grab the air hose. We're going to blow this out. I made a mistake once, and there was a spider nest in there. It was, it was in the tube. Get that on. All right, see, these are the small plugs. Now, I'm not a big fan of them, but this one's in good shape. We'll clean that one up a little bit. We got to do the magneto. This we had. This came off. Uh, the guy, whoever took it apart, you know, it kind of came up, and they didn't know what to do. So we're gonna pull the magneto, and let's get it. The magnets cleaned up, and we'll put it back. We'll make sure it's gapped. So let me pull that off and I'll start cleaning. Clean. Alright, so what I like to do, I just snug it so that it can't go in. Pull the magnet around. I'm going to go ten thousandths with my brass. 
sort of hold it there and then release it and it'll pull in and tighten it done next I need to get my healer gauge back okay just spin it just to make sure it doesn't hit good enough all right we gotta check the valves all right so let's see what we have here so this looks like your exhaust all right and they're not we don't know if they're loose yet so this looks like your intake and over here and I think we can see it coming up as the magnet so the magnet here is firing somewhere in this area this is your TDC and that's all we care about right that's why I like to do uh, the valves and everything at this point because I can see the ignition system I've already tested that I've got everything else going on so now from here let's just follow the event all right so we're gonna go clockwise okay we got an exhaust event so it fired and pushed the bad stuff out let's get the good stuff in all right here comes the good stuff coming in you got a little valve overlap there that's for performance and as you're sucking it in now we're gonna come up to fire in a minute and here comes the magnet you see that relax sometimes you'll see an exhaust bump and right there is the magnet so that's where we want to be so let's just go with our five thousands first let's see if we can slip that in and slip it in well, maybe not it's kind of hard to get in there let's try it on the exhaust yeah that sounds about right okay let's try four thousandths this motor's new it doesn't have a lot of use on it but we still need to check it so four is about the lower end of the spectrum we're a little tight yeah four is it typically about four and seven well, this one's probably a little tight let's go to seven and we'll check out the exhaust yeah that's perfect so the intake feels a little tight so let's tool up I'm gonna take our 10 and 14 so this is the lock nut the 10 and the adjustments on the 14 the bigger one because that's the one that's pushing down on the rocker itself well, let's, let's just find out if we can maybe loosen it a little a little bit not much let's see if that helps once you get it in there, it feels about right. That, that did it. Okay. So now on this one, we just want to check for tight. Let's just make sure that flange is clean. It's not bad, but still. All right, so let's, I got the oil dumping. We'll grab a little taste of it for the bolt. And this is what they look, uh, the blades look like. This is one we're going to use. It's a nice shape. It's all beautiful. I'll show you the other one in a minute. It came real nice. We got to blammo that on. Have going on. Here's our blammo tool. Why does that feel stuck? Shouldn't be. Could just be a piece of junk. Yeah, it's just a piece of junk. I always like to make sure. So I got lubricant on the uh, on the nut. I'll tighten it up. So I still have the plug out. We gotta clean the plug, but I like to make sure I do that later, like when I've done underneath here. All right, we'll just blammo that. Done. All right, I gotta carefully turn it right side up. Now before I do that, guys, and I want to turn it on its other side too, as you guys know, I like to make sure. Give it a minute. Let that soak in both sides. All right, we're going to try one of my techniques, which is we're going to use this thinner paint to start off with so that it kind of gets in and under, and it, it'll tack up quick. And we're going to come back with the other color. So let's see what it does. Now we'll start off with, I don't mind 
some overspray. We're going to need some overspray. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, this is real close to the correct color, too. This will get in underneath. Yeah, that's nice. That's real close. The, the two of them together will create the shade that I'm looking for. And because this is thin, it'll get in. Get in underneath everything. We'll let that dry or tack up at least. And we'll come back in a few minutes and we'll see what's going on. Put the other coats on. Try to get it all done to tonight. It's late. So if I was a little drip. I'm sorry, we'll get that off. This way you can dry overnight and then we can test it and put it back together tomorrow. It's looking pretty good. Hopefully this is the only coat I need. I don't think I'm going to need any more, but we can always come, you know, stop back a little later in, in, the, uh, in the evening. Well, it's late already, but just give it a little... Just enough to, to blend. I think it looks good. I'm going to come back a little later if I can remember. But yeah, just to blow a little bit more on. More on. Just a spot over here will fade a little bit. It's a little too wet to do any more right now. So I think it would be a good idea. i got plenty of paint left. Plenty for this. But it's definitely going to need a night to dry because I put quite a bit on. And it's blended well. You know, anywhere that you can just kind of hide. Oh yeah. That's beauteous. Yeah, that's blended real well. It's just about perfect. Oh, there's a little dirt underneath there. I forgot to clean that better. have to get that another day usually more thorough than that because I did too many machines at once and that really looks nice all right guys so I'm gonna sign off here we'll be back tomorrow with the rest of it we only have a few more things to do I cleaned up a plug we'll put the plug in later we'll get the top on it needs oil and gas and it doesn't need anything else and then we'll do a test run actually maybe we'll before we even do a test run we'll put it all together we'll get the cap on I do want to see that. We want to lube this cable. We want to lube this cable. We got to pull these wheels off and look for other wheels and get all that lubed up. So, yeah, we could maybe do a test run. We'll see. I don't know what I want to do. How the hell do I know? I never know what the hell I'm doing. You know, I just kind of make it look like that. All right. And remember, if it ain't uh, if it ain't fixed, it's probably broken. So put your hands on everything. We'll be back in a little bit. It's all done. I might clear coat it because that just looks bitching when you do, but you don't really have to. Let's give it a shot. Let's tie this back. Touch up the handle a little bit. That should be automatic choke. Oh. beautiful guys I'm very happy very very happy I think we should put a little clear on it let me clean the handle up a little bit more and then we'll call it done do those two things and uh, it'll take about uh, ooh, I want to say when you do that on a day like today about a half hour to an hour to dry it'll take me just about as much time to clean the gun out and straighten up in here and I'll take a break for lunch or something and later on I'll come back we'll get a last look put the bag on it and We'll see what it looks like. It's going to look really sweet. So we'll do that. We'll be back.